All right, today we have a AW45043LE, or they also call it the Seeky. Uh, this is out of a 2000 uh, UD truck, and this transmission is full of water. And it had to get water in it, they think possibly through the, maybe through the filler tube, or maybe even through the vent, because this is not hooked up to your typical uh, cooler you know with the heat exchanger in the radiator this has an oil to air cooler so on the side of the truck you know the lines come out here and it goes right to a cooler mounted on the side of the truck and and that cooler has a fan so the oil just kind of flows through it there's no water involved so and this thing is full of water they had the pan down I guess they tried to flush it out but I'm assuming that maybe uh, the clutches are coming apart and possibly it clogged the screen, but they did have the pan down. Uh, and we went over there to identify what unit it was to give them a price, and I guess they got the okay, so they pulled it and sent us the unit and, and converted. So we're going to be opening this up, and to be honest with you, this is my first time opening one of these, so I have my, my sheets here ready so we can identify the frictions as we uh, identify the drums and the friction as we take it apart. The unit that was before this, which is the JR403E, or they called it the Electromatic, I've done dozens of those. And that was pretty much like, uh, I'm gonna say probably 98 and down. This is a 2000, so I believe in, uh, you know, 99 and up, they switched to these units. So the first thing we're gonna do, uh, this also looks like it has center support bolts in it. Um, there's one, two, one on this side. I'm not sure if there's one coming in from the bottom. So what we're going to do is take the bell off. We're going to take the, the um, extension housing off. And then we're going to flip it and take the pan and the valve body off. And then uh, we'll start with taking the, uh, you know, the gear train out, the pump and the drums. And also have to get this out uh, to get this center support bolt out here it looks like. Uh, all right, so let me get a little closer, and um, I guess we'll start taking this thing apart. And again, this uh, this actually is my first one that we're doing. We don't really get these for some reason. Uh, we did have uh, another one that came in about a month ago, but the guy declined to fix it, and that was the that problem was the low spray was no good because it wouldn't take off and drive. You got to move it to low, and. Uh, and, and take off so you know talking to my tech service when we got that in they said that you know it's pretty common for that to happen and also uh, there's another issue which we'll talk about on the valve body because I was doing some research on this uh, with the EPC solenoid if it's uh, actually put in the wrong way you'll have no reverse so we'll see how that's put in just uh, that was a bulletin I was reading about you know doing some research on this trains all right so let me get a little closer and uh, we'll open this up and see what happens. All right, so I got a couple of the bolts uh, just left in with the bell housing here. So we'll just get the last couple of bolts out. Looks like we got another O-ring here as well. All right, so this. All right, so we got one dowel, one dowel in the case, one dowel here. We we'll get rid of this here for now. Just put it down there. All right, now I'm gonna get the, get this out. This here's the 32 millimeter. seal looks like it's chopped up here looks like this transmission was done before all right now I want to get this speed sensor out right here I 
I took the PTO cover off just to kind of look at it. Okay, this is your uh, probably output speed sensor. All right, let's uh, put this back in here. And I also took the uh, uh, MLP switch off as well. bench that I'm working on and I got uh, two more coming out and, and a few more being towed in today so it's pretty busy here all right now I'm going to take that extension housing off Your mechanism here, speedometer, which I'll take that out and put an O-ring on that. There's also a bearing. And a rear seal. You know, seal rides around here. I'm going to clean this up. So these should come off here. And so here is the speedometer drive. It looks like a spacer. And the park. Okay. This here is the forward clutch accumulator. Actually, let's take that out. And if this is, of course, left loose, it will slip in all forward gears. Uh, from the research that I've done, you can also put this gasket in uh, the wrong way. The holes won't line up. Uh, if it's in incorrectly, the holes won't line up perfectly. Accumulator. Okay. All right, now you know what we'll do? 
See if we can get this pump out. And here also was uh, probably some kind of a temp sensor I want to take out. So I don't break that. Alright, that's this right here. And I'm going to take this Here is the o one of the O-rings around the goes around the case, and then you have another O-ring in the pump here. I wonder if I could just get this pump out before we uh, drop the pan and the valve body on this. Oh, well, let's try it. That maybe is around twelve. Yep. I'm not sure how easy this pump is going to come out. Let's gasket also because of the water. Let's try this. the uh, forward here. Right. And here's a washer, a uh, part of a bearing. You go there. This here is probably stuck on the gasket. I'm pretty sure this is going to come apart because you got clutches in here. And this has to come apart to, be, to change the O-rings. Alright. So we'll work on that. There. And also in here should be the the overdrive direct, so it's probably got to split at that gasket, it's probably just stuck on there. Okay. Next thing we'll do now is uh, uh, we're going to drop the um, uh, pan. We'll get the valve body out, and then I got to take this uh, harness off to get the center support bolts out. Oh, these lines aren't loose.
so I don't have to bend these things or anything like that. <clears throat> All right, let me just mark this one. That, um, that one that was before this, that uh, JR403E, or they call the Electromatic, is like an overgrown pathfinder. And this is, you know, kind of like a giant to Toyota. Just it stinks with the water, because the gaskets get uh, very hard to Scrape off. down like I said so not much is in there all right let's get the filter out of here uh, you know what this they probably changed the filter maybe they changed it to see if it would work because the bolts are all loose So we want to unplug these. And the EPC solenoid looks like it's under there. I ordered a solenoid group, so I'm changing them all because mainly, you know, this thing was full of water. Okay, where's my eight? Looks like we got a temp sensor here. Now I'm gonna actually cut this. So I'm gonna probably put that on there. Uh, we'll unplug these solenoids. Here, yeah, see these things are even broken here because they're pulling right out. So somebody definitely worked on this before. Yeah, that one's broken. And this one too. So they're all gonna they're all gonna come right out. Let me just put you guys uh, on hold for one second. I just want to, <clears throat> what I want to do here is just uh, 
got some different wire colors, green, tan. I just want to write this stuff down here. Um, just to be on the safe side. And then it doesn't look too bad for this valve body to come out. Probably all these bolts are on the outside, all the tens. This will pop out. I could do see it looks like there is trans tech gaskets in here. So we definitely are going to open up this valve body. I've never, again, done one of these before, so we're going to do that as well. All right, so let me just uh, do one thing. I'll be right back. Okay. All right, so I cut this uh, tie wrap off, and these, not even a connector on here, so somebody really screwed this thing up, the last person that worked on it. down brackets okay all right so again these will just all unplug because they're all broken anyway I'm gonna do some research see if I can possibly get an internal harness for this Okay, so uh, let's uh, see if we can get this valve body out. I'm sure there's accumulators under here as well. size long short but that's pretty self-explanatory where, where these would go Pretty much all the tens. I'm gonna lift this thing right up. Okay. Looks like a pretty busy valve body here. And I'm gonna open this. Got a bunch of tubes here. Definitely going to open that when I'm alone. Okay. Get these gaskets out of here. All right, now we have some uh, case seals. same. Yeah, OK. 
Okay, so there's four of them and they appear to pretty much be the same. So this is moving. I'm tapping it very gently. Very gently, okay. internal harness and there's not much left on the EPC. You know, it looks like they just maybe put some protective wrap on these things and plugged, the, plugged it in. Now that's really not that good. Here's the valve body uh, with the EPC solenoid is here. And I guess you can orient this solenoid the wrong way according to a bulletin I was reading, and if you do, it will give you no reverse, this solenoid here. Looks like you take the bolt out, the bracket out, and possibly you can go 180 degrees. Okay, so I'm gonna get these accumulators out. So let's get snap ring pliers, make the spring out. Oh man, that's in there. See with the the water swells these seals. I mean look at the look at the seal here. You know it'll come it'll come right out and these things get stuck in here. You know, water is uh, very bad the transmission. Okay. Now I'm assuming we got some center support bolts in here. So I'm going to pull those out. And then we'll see if we can get that center support out. And it looks like there's uh, just the output shaft and the low clutches. And that's it. Now we'll try, I'm going to try to get that thing apart. And look at that. Center support bolts. Mm 
Right, they all appear to be the same. Set of clutches out. Here is the direct clutch. Okay, now let's see if this thing will come out. Okay, here's the support. And inside the support is the second clutch. And you also have seals. You have seals here. All right, so when we put this back, Gotta be careful, I'm gonna put like some uh, STP on these really slippery stuff. And here's a washer, two washers. This one will go here, and the other one, this will go, I guess, on the planet. Actually, is the low sprig, so we gotta get that snap ring out. Looks like it's not so easy to do here. You gotta get it just right. And yeah, somebody put an X on it uh, to show which way that sprig faces. So let's try this again. Okay. okay. All right. I actually ordered uh, the low sprig. I want to see what this thing looks like. We'll go to rust on here. So I'm gonna be cleaning this thing up here. This should come off. Yes. And it says worn here. It says worn. But Planet set here. All right, so this this washer is going to go here. There's my light again. All right, all we got left is the low 
lower wrist clutches, and we'll start looking at the frictions. And the uh, lower reverse piston is in the case. I'm gonna just try to figure out how I'm gonna get that out. I'm gonna pull the snap ring in here. And it's got some lot of rust on it. Alright, these are starting to actually come apart. The clutch, you can still see the writing on them, but being the fact that there was water in this, I already got my banner kit here. Not taking any chances with that. Okay. Alright, so there's a piston down there with springs and a... So I'm going to have to see uh, what I can come up with to get that out. get rid of the case, clean up a little bit, get rid of the oil and the water, and I'm going to see if I can separate this, it's probably stuck on the gasket, so we can get to the overdrive direct drum, or there's also seals in here, which I'll pull it out, uh, and we'll take the pump apart and the drums apart. Alright, so I'll give me a few minutes, and I will be right back. Okay. All right, so this will come off. I kind of took a scraper and just kind of hit it in there. So this will come right off. And now, of course, we have the job of scraping the gasket. And I'll run this through the tank, you know, and uh, at least this one to see if we can scrape this thing off here. But that's the one bad thing with the water really gets cooked on here. Okay, here is the overdrive direct. First, we'll check the, um, the overdrive clutch or the overdrive brake clutch. I call it the large overdrive. And then there's a ring gear in there. Doesn't look like uh, too bad of a unit to, to do. You know, valve body looks a little tricky, but you know, not not too too bad. Okay. So these, of course, everything with the water, everything is going to be changed. This green gear will come out. Okay, we got a, a bearing race here. We have a sealing ring or a Teflon ring here. Okay, let's look at that. And then a three part of the bearing here. Okay, so the piston is in here. You got to take the snap ring out to get the springs out and then the piston out. And then you have um, ceiling rings here that go against the case. And you have two rings here. Another ceiling ring here. I'm sorry, another uh, seal here. Okay, these are basically just O-rings. So you want to definitely be careful putting these things in. So I'm gonna, when I do this, I'm gonna Grease these up real good. Then I use the STP to really slippery stuff. I'll put it here. Maybe I'll sand the case to get any sharp edges off of where these ride and slide right in. Okay. So there's that. This should slide off here. Yes, it does. Okay, we got a sprig in here, which we'll just take out, make sure it's good. Got some bearings here. Uh, let's see. Kind of like, an, like I said, like an overgrown Toyota unit. Alright, we have... That goes right there. And of course we've got another bearing here that rides against this pump. Take a look. Forward drum. I'm going to get the hub out. And this hub, of course, drives the direct clutch. Okay, so there's that. And here's the hub. 
for the forward. All right, you just gotta watch all your bearings, a lot of bearings. Looks like a typical Toyota. All right, again, you know, these clutches are, there wasn't water in this thing, it had another problem, but you know, I can still see the writing on them, but I don't like the fact that it had water in it, so they're going to be changed. All right, now we got this here. This here, that was on the, uh, it fell out of the inside of the forward drum with the rings right, that goes just like that, so. It can get a little confusing with these bearings here. All right, this has a wave plate, and I'm, I'm just putting it back the way it came out so the, the dish is facing up. All right, here is second clutch. All right, this hollow shaft tail will come out. Just got to take this snap ring out, and that'll come out. researching an internal harness because I definitely want to get that. Definitely want to get that. I'm not really sure if they noticed that there was water in here because it doesn't look, none of these clutches came apart like the screen was clogged. But another thing is this is worn here. You know, it's not perfect. It's not, uh, there's a step, you know, versus this one which is smooth, there's no step. So I'm not really sure what this thing was doing, but I'll call Monday and find out. And again, I do have this sprayer coming. I asked my supplier if he sells a lot of those, because uh, when I called my tech service, he said, um, you know, you've seen that before, he, he feels it's a fairly common failure when I Call my supplier, he said he sells them here and there, not too many of them. Compared to how many parts he sells. All right, so let's open up this pump. And then we gotta get a band to line this thing up. But I don't think I'm gonna be putting this section in the tank because if there's valves and stuff in here, I don't want anything to get uh, anything to get stuck but no big deal I can scrape it off second here. Okay. There we go. Okay. Going to be cleaning this up there. We got some rust here from the water. I do have a pump bushing. I'm going to change that. Okay, so let's see here. Okay, you can see the witness mark of how this pump here is. These gears look okay. Yeah, gears look good. All right, no marking, so it's gonna go just like that. Okay, this looks good. Even the pump pushing looks good, but put another one in. Here, it looks like I could take a 
possibly take a snap ring out for the output shaft. Maybe uh, we can see what this looks like. All right, we got some bearings here. This is just a raised part of the shaft. Okay. Come out. Okay, we got bearings here, bearings here again. Sun gear. And the rear plant. Get another washer, and then we have the black plastic, which will not come out. So this washer will ride against here. I'll take a closer look at that, but I think we're just going to leave this setup together. So, I think that is about it for this uh, AW450-43 Ali, or they also call it the Siki. <sighs> Alright, just to let you know, this one went there like that. But again, i got to see about this. I may be changing that. It's not perfect. Uh, 2000 UD uh, water intrusion but not through the cooler because it's an air oil to air cooler uh, but as you can see the transmission was full of water they the gas station or the repair shop believes it may have came in through the filler tube which is possible I don't know uh, what the situation was uh, also possibly could have came in through the vent uh, so we're going to do the regular overhaul on this. Um, I thank you guys for watching. I normally don't like to film on the first new unit that I get, but the fact that I may not get another one of these, or maybe, you know, this is the first one I'm getting in, in you know, we were, we were down the street in a, the, the place where uh, we first started in the 60s, where my dad first opened. And we were there for 27 years, we're here for 23 years, so a total of 50 years. I'm, I'm with him since about 85, and uh, never had one of these. Again, the, the one before this, the Electromatic or the JR-403E, which is like the oversized four-speed Pathfinder unit, I've done a ton of those. Uh, pretty popular but this is my first one of these and who knows if I'll get another one so I definitely did want to film it so thank you guys for bearing with me on this because it is my first one and I did whatever research I could uh, I called my tech service and they don't even offer a tech train manual on this but I mean it's not too bad it's pretty plain and simple I'll just do one drum at a time overhaul it put it aside shouldn't be a problem and I guess that's about it. So uh, thanks for watching. Have a great day. And uh, we will see you next one.